Hello guys, so in today's video, you have me again here, but most importantly, I have Jonathan here. You remember him from the other video. So I took delivery of my rabbit cage. You can see we are at my place now and I have one rabbit and this very rabbit is from his place. <laughs> so we'll follow the tabs right now. I have some new things I'll be doing, but we'll talk about it. So in today's video is a very simple one. It's a sit down one with him. We want to understand a few things. And so... The question I want to pose to him is that now a lot of you guys have been watching the videos and you know that um, we've been talking about grass cutter on this channel. We've been talking about rabbits on this channel. We want to ask him for someone who is sitting down, who wants to start this whole thing. You're thinking which is more profitable. Is it rabbit or is it grass cutter? Now, uh, I'll go to Reverend... Uh, Dominic Ziegley and we will talk about the grass cutter bit but for now we have Jonathan. Jonathan is more into the rabbit and he's in the rabbit cages like you can see so we'll talk to him about it and he's going to give us his breakdown from his standpoint and then we'll go to the grass cutter man also and get our standpoint. So welcome back again to the channel. Thank you. Now, now you're a familiar face. Yes. <laughs> oh. Yes, yes. And then you speak up for us a bit. So guys there's some construction going on there so that's why the sound is there so forgive us but for now we'll try to get the sound well so welcome again to the channel the other videos were amazing they loved it and people loved it so that's why we are bringing you on again for the third time um rabbit versus grass cutter have you raised grass cutter before yes i once started with grass cutter okay by what time i stopped okay how long did you do it I've been there about two years. Of, of two years and then you stopped and you switched to rabbit. Yes. Okay. Yes. So now, the fact that you have basic understanding to it, you've sold some before at the time. Maybe now you may not know the current market pricing, but let's talk about rabbit farming. Why do you think to you, rabbit farming is profitable than that of uh, grass cutter? Let's go into the breakdowns. Yeah. With the rabbit farming, actually, it's easy to grow. And then um, when we want to calculate the breeding that they breed per animal, if I compare it with the grass cutter, there's a big gap in it. Okay. For example, um, averagely one rabbit can give birth six times in a year. Okay. Compared to grass cutter, that can give birth only two times in a year. Mm. If you miss one, that means once in a year. Okay. You may also miss some of the rabbit breeding time. So you can maybe hit about five times in a year okay. or four, depending okay. on the system you are using. All right. Yeah. So I can see rabbit can breed more animals than the grass cutter. So I decided to go for the grass, uh, rabbit, rabbit instead farm. of the grass cutter. Okay. So now let's look. Uh, since you're talking about the breeding, so rabbit gives on an average how many? If I should go for the six times in a year, mm -hmm. each rabbit gives an average of five. Okay. That's an average of five. So times the six, we are talking about 30 animals per rabbit. Per rabbit yes. in a year. Okay, so he's having a phone call. You can you can answer it. Awesome. So he's just having a phone call right now. Um, so one rabbit, five averagely for the whole year, that's 30 per one. Yes. Okay, and for the grass cutter, it's also averagely how many? Five. Five and they litter twice, twice yeah. in a whole year. So that is 10, 10 as opposed to one. Okay, so now already in the numbers, rabbit is ahead, but the money. Mm. Currently, uh, I don't really know how much um, uh, grass cutter is sold because the prices always vary. Yes. What the restaurant buys and what you sell to just regular people who are buying. What are the price differences when it comes to how much you would sell to a restaurant or how much a restaurant will sell to end user or someone who has a restaurant and is selling? How, how do the prices match per individual sales and all that stuff? Okay. I will use the rabbit as an example since I'm more into the rabbit. Okay. For instance, when we are selling rabbit and somebody is coming to buy meat rabbit, it's a meat, he's going to eat it. So mm -hmm. we sell it to be more competitive with the market, mm -hmm. which is an average of 60 CDs or 50 or 70, depending on the weight of the animal. Mm -hmm. But if the person is going to breed the animal, he's going to rear, you have to look for a very good breed for the person. Mm -hmm. So that ranges around 100 CDs and 150. Okay. Uh -huh. So based on those two different categories, as in breeding and then the meat that we are going to eat, mm -hmm. there are two different prices. Okay. Okay, so now let's take the one you're going to eat. 
and let's use that price for 100 cities right yeah 100 or 70 the one you are going to eat okay 100 or 70 so let, let's take the the mark the higher marking one of right. uh, 100 cities so if you take 100 cities times 30 yes that's around three thousand that, that's three thousand a year. year for one animal for one animal so that means if you have like uh 10 breeding stock the female the doe unit 10 doe units that are giving you like 10 times 30 that is 300 rabbits in a year and you want to sell those ones and 300 times 100 will give you 30,000 cities in a year that, that's dope money yes that is dope money but one will argue for for things we don't know yet let's peg the price of um grass cutter as maybe let's say 250 cities i don't know for now the same way grass cutter will give us like 10 uh or let's say 10 in a year and one will go for 250 so then yeah. it is like 2500 of a sort or maybe also 3000 yeah. so then it comes down to your patience what you want to do and what yeah. you don't want to do um while you were raising grass cutter were you more scared raising them than you are with rabbits yes yes god there are challenges okay i was in the city mm -hmm. very difficult finding grasses to feed the rabbit, mm -hmm. uh, to feed the grass cutter. So, okay. So during the dry season, we have to go around searching for elephant grass and all that stuff to feed them because they are not good at pellets like how the rabbits are. Okay. Uh, so their feeding is also problematic, especially when you are in the city zone compared to the rabbit. Mm. So when you are doing that one, you have to look at that side. Okay. Uh, but when you are in the villages, it's easier because. You may have the grasses around you to okay them. okay uh, do you do your own pellet as in what are some of the ways you think can maximize profit when doing uh, rabbit farming what are some of the mechanisms you've placed in because it was from you i heard when i came to your shop the other time your your farm the other time you made mention of something i kept in my head you were like once you're feeding them there is it the feed per ratio or something you mentioned the uh, Feed conversion ratio. Feed conversion ratio. That it goes to a, a time they are just wasting food and you don't want them to waste food. What are some of the measures you put in place that will make you maximize profit and not put so much money in the rabbit farming? Yes. And example is the pillar that we are doing. Okay. Uh, we, with the powdered feed that you give to them, they normally scratch the powder out. Mm. But when it is in a pillar form, they collect it and eat it as it is. Okay. So they split less feed. Mm. Therefore, you are also uh, reducing your cost. Okay. Uh -huh. So if you can maybe get a mini pelleting machine or hand one or to try something, it's better than using a powder. But if you don't have the powder, too, then you have to make sure your feeding bowl is in a way that will not split the feed. Okay, that it won't be spilled. Okay, so now for... No problem. So he's checking his phone right now. Let's let's wait on him. So I don't want to edit any part. I want this to be raw so that you guys can have the raw juice. So um, here is the thing. What are some of the compositions you would say one should put together for good pellets if they want to do it at home? Some of the things you would suggest for your 10 years experience of rabbiting. Yes, yes. Um, what is most important is uh, you need meat, especially when you're doing meat, uh, animals mm -hmm. so you look at your protein content okay in the feed so you have to make sure your protein content is ranging around 16 or 15 percent okay uh -huh. or if less accra it should be around 12 percent okay of the feed and then make sure you have enough uh, fiber mm -hmm. in the in the feed fiber can be in the form of wheat brown or dry grasses as in hay mm -hmm. as you can see in other videos or other um, feed mm. advices uh -huh. okay so guys uh, right now uh, in the house okay look at something we are right here this is one grass the rabbit eats so you can just take these ones dry them up and then you use this one right yes. okay you don't necessarily have to dry them on the sun okay you can just keep them mm, under the shade okay so it gets dried by itself okay you keep it and then you give it to them. It's very good. Adding these things, it serves as a fiber. It helps their digestive system. Okay. So they don't have this diarrhea and all that form of things. Okay. So this type of grass, dried one, little protein. What is the typical dry, uh, rabbit protein, one would say? Because we know they eat grass and all those things. So how am I going to select the protein and all that stuff? What, me, I don't know anything about anything. So, yeah. It's true. Um, so normally what we do uh, as a layman, mm -hmm. 
Uh, we know Moringa, as I said the other time, has yeah. a higher protein content. Yeah. And then we use some of the commercial feed that have been made already. Mm. Not for rabbit, but for uh, the chicken. The chicken. Okay. Like the grower mash, like this. the grower mash is ranging around uh, 15% protein. Okay. And then the layer mash is ranging 17% protein. Okay. So you, you don't give it to them like that. We mix it with quick brown. Okay. So that it can increase the fiber content in the feed. Okay. Uh, so when you mix it with the wheat brown, which is uh, when we buy one bag of. Um, how do you call it? Uh, Grow mash. Mm -hmm. Mix two bags of um, wheat, brown. wheat brown. Okay, so two bags of wheat brown to one, one bag, bag of yeah. grower mash. mash. Okay. Yeah. When we mix it like that, you know the protein content has been diluted. Okay. With almost half of the same wheat. Yes. So your seventeen percent protein has been cut down into half. Okay. So that's a layman calculation. Okay. You know the seventeen has been divided into half. That's you are having about let's say seven percent, seven point five percent per protein. serving. Yes. Okay. I think you've already missed it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a little protein in the in the in the in the wheat bran as well. Mm. But that's not much counted. Okay. So when you boost it with the moringa, mm -hmm. you boost your protein content. Or probably you can also buy some soya milk, soy milk. Okay. And then add let's say six kilograms to the total amount of kilograms you get. Mm. You know I said you are going to use Two bags of wheat bran, that's 50 kg. Mm. And then one bag of grandma, mm -hmm. which is 50 kg. So in ratio, it's one is one. Okay. Uh, so adding uh, about, that's 100 kg. So adding about 6 kg of uh, protein, mm -hmm. which is soya milk, mm -hmm. it boosts your protein content. And you are good to do. Okay. Okay, that's good. So, guys, this is some wonderful insight he's given us uh, as to how rabbit is. So, quickly. In Ghana currently, where should one sell their, their, their stuff? Well, you would suggest, okay, I have rabbits right now. I can sell like 10 every week. I don't have anybody to sell. Where would you advise they sell it as a yeah. Kickstarter? When we are starting first, try, I always say try people around you. Mm -hmm. Let them know what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Let them know the value of the meat. Mm. Because the meat is even valuable than the grass cut that you are talking about. Mm. You can make research and see the advantage of the meat. Okay. So if you do that, it will help you to sell them out. Secondly, mm -hmm. get in touch with other farmers. There okay. may be other farmers who, are, who want the animals to sell. For example, you know about Farmer Brown. He also buys from other people mm -hmm. and other farmers as well. So get in touch. Let people know what you are doing. And then the market itself will come. And let them taste their meat yourself and see how it is. And then you can easily introduce it to someone else. Okay. So guys... If you are able to taste the meat yourself, you are able to always introduce it to someone else. We've been talking to Jonathan right now. He's been able to tell us why he thinks that rabbit farming is uh, profitable as compared to that of the grass cutter. Now, he has raised grass cutter before for a period of about two years and he stopped the move to rabbit because of challenges he had raising grass cutter in the city because they, they d depend more on grass, uh, the elephant grass or the maize fields and all that stuff. So he's saying that in the city, it is not so ideal. But if you are in a place where you can have grass to feed them, then it's more economical to go that way. Rabbit also, in order to make to maximize uh, to maximize profit, when should be the right time we sell them so they don't eat more from our our our, our, our feeding for us to spend more on them. Yes, that's very very important. They feed more or they convert more feed into meat during the first three to four months. Okay. So. When you want to feed them for the meat, you start, as soon as they start eating, you feed them more. Okay. After four months, they are wasting your feed because they are just maintaining their body weight. Mm. Uh, so we try to sell the animals exactly at four or within four to five months. You have to discuss. But after that, it's a cost. It's an automatic cost. What is the, what is the uh, weight? At what weight would you say, weight class should you say a rabbit should be sold? Meat rabbit? Meat rabbit. Averagely... 2.5 or 2 kilo, it should go. It should go? Yes. Okay. So guys, you, you can hear it for yourself. <laughs> we are learning a lot. Um, I will bring him on. Now, when it comes to feeding the rabbits, there is some say you don't have to feed the rabbits too much for them to be fatty or else they won't be able to breed well. So when it comes to the, the breeders versus the meat, uh, what would you suggest be the feeding composition for them? which is like, for someone who is lame, he just knows I have to give them wheat, 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 but I want to produce, how do I produce more? 
because it's all part of the profit thing. I hope you get my question. Yes. So, um, it's true, when you are feed the rabbits and they get obeged, mm -hmm. they will not give them. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you are doing breeding stock or you want bits from your animal, the ones they've already given birth to, mm -hmm. you have to make sure you don't have too much maize and then the carbohydrate stuff in the feed. Okay. Because when they eat their protein, it turns into meat and mm. that's not fat, that is meat. Mm. Uh, but when you give them too much of the concentrated feed, they got fatty. Okay. So even when you kill them, you see a lot of fat in, in their them. bodies. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. So that's the, the, the difference. Okay. Uh -huh. So when you are feeding them, just make sure that you have your more fiber mm -hmm. so that it can digest most of the feed that is in their body. Okay. And then you have your protein content in a good level. And then while you give them the grasses, they get their vitamins from the grasses and all that. Okay, so the last question I will put. Also, I think it has something to do with the growth rate. Water. Is water yes, important? Very, very, very important. They have to have water all the time. Mm. So that, because it helps them to digest all the food very well. Okay. And if they don't have water, they don't eat. That's okay. Okay. Mm. If, they don't have, if they don't have water, they don't eat. So, guys... Uh, this is where we are going to end the video. If you have questions, specific questions, kindly put them in the comment section below. We have him always. We can call him. We can go to his farm and we'll ask him more questions. I will do that for you. Um, I will go to Reverend Ziggly and then we'll do this other part of the, of the video so you guys can have like a good overview of this whole thing right here. Uh, so on behalf of you guys and myself, we'll say thank you to... Uh, now I'll call him Reverend Jonathan. <laughs> So of Agrotech, the last time in the other video I said Agrotech. I was just watching it back one night, so I said Agrotech. It's oh. Agrotech, Organic Grow Technologies, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, the reason why it's orga Organic Grow Technologies is that he doesn't do only this. He builds um, greenhouse systems also. And um, he's been trying some soil technologies to grow crops based on the urine of the rabbits, based on the... Um, the feces, right? And that is one thing that has got to do with the profit margins of rabbits. If you, there are a lot of things to harvest from rabbits that can give you more money. So, for example, if a rabbit costs 100 CDs and you are able to harvest their urine, their feces and everything in attachment to sell for, uh, how do you call it, as, as manure, fresh manure to grow your own crops and all that stuff, it will boost your profit margins at a very higher level. I don't know, um, comparatively, uh, the feces and that of the urine of the grass cutter, I don't know, so I can't say much about it, but I know for sure the rabbit, you can sell its fur, the leather. It's also used for garments and bags and all those kind of stuff. So when it comes to profit, this is what we are talking about. We'll do a separate video where we talk about profit maximizations in rabbit farming, and then we go deep into those type of things. But for today, rabbit versus uh, grass cutter, video one, We'll see how it goes for you guys. So if you're interested in starting a rabbit farm, this is what you should know. If you're also looking at starting um, a grass cutter farm, then you start doing comp the comparison. I'll bring you the other video as well so that you guys can know. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much. One more point. He says he wants to add one more point. Yes. When you are doing rabbits, you feed more people. Put that in your mind. <laughs> Not only about the money. You mm. Produce more animals. So more people eat and are cheaper. In Africa, we need to eat. Oh! <laughs> Nice one, nice one, nice one. So when you when you grow more rabbit, you feed more people. On that note, we are going to end it right here. The channel is Rabbit and More. Do subscribe to the channel. We are growing this family. Let's keep our comments coming. I'll go to other farms to bring you other videos. So anything you are interested in, whether poultry, um, uh, tilapia farming, whatever it is that is your interest, so long as it has to do with agriculture and livestock, let me know. I'll go there and cover it so we can all learn and boost our farming. I'm an aspiring farmer. Like I said, I'm starting gradually. I started with a small cage with three rabbits. And this is the next level I'm moving to. <laughs> right now, this is a 12-unit one. How many can this one contain? Yeah, the model is, it takes 12. Okay. Uh, with the winners, uh -huh. each one takes three. So three. you can do the calculation. Yes. So, three, three, three times 12. You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. <laughs> so guys, thank you very much. It's been a good one. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video with someone if you find the information. If you find what we shared here informative enough, share it with other people. Like the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as you know, on this channel, Charlie, I'll bring you just dope content every day. Peace out. And we say thank you to the man, Jonathan. Okay.